Romans chapter 13, verse number 12. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And then we'll jump over to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And let us put on the armor of light. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12, probably something that most of us can quote. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. For the next few moments, with the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to try to preach to you, teach to you, whatever ends up happening, ambassadors of light and rulers of darkness. Ambassadors of light and rulers of darkness. One more time before we get into the word of the Lord here tonight, could we lift our hands and just ask that God would speak to us. Lord, I love you. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. Anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, God. Equip me with your word, God. Put the right words in my mouth, Lord. We take dominion over anything that would be a hindrance against this service, God. Minister, Lord, to the hearts of every mind and every soul that is here. Lord, confirm your word with signs following, God, and let the gifts of the Spirit flow in this house tonight, God. Minister to somebody, set somebody free, deliver somebody, God. Lord, we pray that your spirit would flow, God, out of these four walls, God, and minister to every heart of every soul that's in this city, God, and that they would feel the drawing of the supernatural, God, as we wrap this thing up in the end time, God. We ask it all in the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus. Let everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I tell you to be seated, but I guess I didn't tell you to stand up. <laughs> A few days ago, I was preaching in Nashville, Tennessee, and I woke up for my morning devotion, and I went and sat in the corner of the room, and I opened the blinds and <clears throat> was blinded by the sunlight, wasn't ready for it. And uh, I sat down, and the moment I sat down, the Lord, it doesn't always happen for me this way. Typically, i got to pray for a little while before the Lord starts talking to me. But the moment I sat down, the Lord began to deal with me about pushing back against darkness and about punching through the darkness with light. And in that, I began just to do a little bit of a study. That's what I want to try to talk to you tonight about. In the first portion of this, I want to explain what it means to be an ambassador of light. That is you and I. If you have the gift of the Holy Ghost here tonight, you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You are called to be an ambassador of light. Amen. You are called to be that which goes into the darkness and gives the world the light of Calvary. So the first thing that I asked myself, and that is, what does it mean to be an ambassador? Webster defines an ambassador as a diplomatic agent, of the highest rank accredited to foreign government, as the resident representative of his or her own government, typically on foreign soil. As I begin to look throughout Scripture and try to find what would be a good representation of what an ambassador of light is, I was very quickly drawn to John the Baptist. I don't know if there was anybody that could be a better example of what it means to be an ambassador of light. John 1 and 6 says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. But he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. John is a perfect example of what I'm trying to explain to us tonight on the onset of this message. John is an ambassador of light. He has the simplistic understanding that he is not himself the light, but he is sent to point people 
to the light of Calvary. All of us here tonight that have been blood-bought, baptized in Jesus' name, repented of our sins, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, we are an ambassador of light as John was. It is our God-given call in all that we do to point people to get out of darkness and bring them into the light that we enjoy every single day of our life. He said, I'm not that light, but I'm operating in the authority of that light. He knew that he was not in totality that light, but I can tell you who that light is. That light is Jesus, one coming that I'm preparing the way for. I'll stand in the wilderness crying, saying, I'm preparing the way for Jesus. John 8 and 12, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The moment we took part in Calvary by the gift of the Holy Ghost, the death, the burial, and the, revel and the resurrection, we became a part of the light, the true light, the only light, the light that is God manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, Jesus Christ. We now are a part of the light of Calvary. We are ambassadors of that light. Everywhere that we go, we should be showing forth the light. Every time we step into the world, we are stepping into something that is masked in darkness. And it is our God call, our God duty, our God responsibility to go forth as the light of the world. Amen. Now the second part of this is the rulers of darkness. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and against rulers of the darkness of this world. In this world right now, if you look at that scripture and take it at the face value, you see that there are rulers of darkness. Those that are rulers of darkness, to be a ruler of something means that you have command over it. There are people in high places right now that are trying to rule the darkness all over this world. They are trying to mask every young person in darkness. They are trying to mask every individual under the sound of my voice right now in darkness. They are trying to cloud our minds in darkness. But we have to realize that these rulers of darkness have no authority against those that are the ambassadors of light. Scripture says that Satan is called the prince of the air. He is the one that is the prince of the atmosphere. He is traveling to and fro. He is the prince of the air. But amongst the air and the prince of the air, in the middle of all of that, God has a church that is the city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hid. It is our God call. It is our God responsibility that in a world where rulers of darkness, those that are trying to do everything they can do on the political platform, in, in every avenue of life, there are rulers of darkness right now. And the only hope against the rulers of darkness are the ones of which I am preaching to tonight. We are the ambassadors of light. It is our God responsibility. It is our God call that each and every single one of us are ambassadors of light against the rulers of darkness. Romans 13, 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. 
Now this next part that I'm about to read sounds an awful lot like the tongues and interpretation and the prophetic words that have been coming to this church as of late. It says, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe. The Lord's coming is closer than we have ever thought it to be. So if there has ever been the time for the church to wake up out of its sleep, if there has ever been a time for the church to rub the sleepy out of our eyes, get us some Holy Ghost caffeine shots, if I must say, and get a hold of what we are supposed to be doing Redemption is drawing closer than we've ever seen. The eastern sky is about to part sooner than we think it is. Coming of the Lord is closer than we've ever thought. So we need to take the warning of Romans. Now is high time. It is the perfect time. It is the only time. It is the precise time. It is the specific time for the church to wake up and say, we are ambassadors of light in the face of a world that is full of rulers of darkness. Verse number 12 of Romans chapter 13. Watch this. For the night is far spent. I love that part. The night is has had enough time. The night is spent enough. The night has given enough into the world. But now it is the time. Watch this. The day is at hand. The night has had enough time to rule. The night, those that are rulers of the darkness, they have had enough time to command the darkness over this world. The night has spent enough. The night has invested enough into our young people. The night has invested enough into this world. The night has invested enough into those that are around us. Now it is time. The day is at hand. The ambassadors of the light, it is now time for us to arise. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. I don't believe that that's talking about just from us. Yes, we should cast off the works of darkness. But I'm a firm believer that it's not just talking about us casting off the works of darkness. I believe it's talking about those that are bound by the works of darkness. It's time for us to be the day. The day is at hand. The light is at hand. It's time for us to get out there and show them there is a better way. There is a greater truth. There is something more powerful than what you're a part of. The day is at hand. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness. Now watch this last part. I love this last part. And let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light. That word armor, according to Thayer's Dictionary, means arms used in warfare or weapons. The light of which we have been brought into is not a light for us to just enjoy, but it is a light for us to use as a weapon against the darkness. The darkness of this world is blanketing everything right now. The chaos, the confusion, the this, that, and the other. And I don't want to get on all the politics of it all because it it really doesn't matter because now is the time. The day is at hand for those that are blood-bought, born again, and heaven-bound to take hold of the weapons of light and get into the darkness and go to war against the things that are trying to take the souls into an eternal darkness. Night is far spent. 
The day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's time for us to wake up every morning and get the armor of light ready. Get the sword of light ready. Get the, get the breastplate of, 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 of light ready. Get everything that we can get on. Coat ourselves in light. Dress ourselves in light. And step out into a world that is masked in darkness. I'm a firm believer that that, that which was promised to Joshua and that what was promised to Moses that everywhere the sole of their foot would touch God would give them dominion I believe that we have that same kind of authority everywhere we go we are holding on to a weapon of light and every time we step foot somewhere you can take dominion over darkness with light Every time you walk up and down your street in your neighborhood, you ought to start saying, I speak the light of Calvary into that home. I speak the light of Calvary down this street. I speak the light of Calvary down Emerson. I speak the light of Calvary. I speak the light of Calvary. It's a weapon of light. 2 Peter 1, 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. I spoke about this the last time I preached on Wednesday night. I talked about how uh, the word, remember his words, the prophetic word sharpens you to be a better light in a dark place. The word of God sharpens you to be a better light in the dark place. The preached word makes us a better light in a dark place. Watch this. So that you can be a light in a dark place until the day dawn. Until the coming of the Lord. Until the eastern sky parts and he comes riding down. Until the coming of the Lord. It is the job of us as the light to be the only saving agent that is in the darkness. This darkness is masking everything. But everywhere the light goes, we are to shine in dark places. Watch until the coming of the Lord. I can't wait until the day where the Lamb is the light where there's no more crying, where there's no more heartache, where there's no more pain, where there's no more cancer, where there's no more sorrow, where there's no more brokenheartedness, where there's no more blood diseases, where there's no more mental diseases, where there's no more suicide, where there's no more tumors, where there's no more death, where there's no more, where there's no more anything. I can't wait for the coming of the Lord. But until that day, I have a responsibility to this world. And my responsibility is to be an ambassador of light in the face of darkness. Until the Lord comes back and I hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. It is my job. It is my calling. It is my life's goal not to preach a pretty sermon ever again. Not to just impress somebody, but so that we can be the light in the midst of a dark world. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That word comprehend is better said as apprehend or overcome. The light shined, but the darkness could not overcome or apprehend the light. Talking about the, the coming of the Lord, it said they tried to kill him. They tried to put him in a grave. They tried to do it all. But then all of a sudden on the third day, that light come busting out of the grave again. It said they tried to arrest the light. They tried to remove the light, but the light just kept on shining. Because the law of first mention is in the beginning God said let 
there be light. And there was light. And God saw that it was good. And his first action of seeing that light was good was he separated the light from the darkness. So the law of first mention is wherever there is light, there cannot be darkness. From the day that the Lord spoke the light into existence, it could never share a room with darkness again. So that means as long as we are the light of the world, this earth still has a chance. This city still has a chance because everywhere that you go, if you are really putting on the armor of light, it doesn't matter how strong the darkness wants to be. The moment the light shows up because the law of first mention is light was good and it was separated from darkness. So because the light was good and it was separated from darkness, wherever the light shows up, darkness has to be dispelled. Wherever you go when you wake up tomorrow, I challenge you to be thinking, I'm shedding light into a dark world. When you're pumping gas at your car, I challenge you to stand there and say, I'm being a light to a dark world. When you're getting your groceries, I challenge you to say, I'm being a light to a dark world. When you're picking your kids up from school, I challenge you to say, I'm being a light to the dark world. Because wherever there is light, darkness cannot dwell. Wherever light walks, darkness has to be dismissed. Wherever light goes, darkness has to go. I can't be in the presence of light. So if we are called to be the ambassadors of light, we have to have an embassy somewhere. And an embassy is a place where no matter where it's at, it has its own jurisdiction here on earth. These four walls, the church, is our embassy. So we come here and we get charged. Come on now. We get empowered. We get uplifted. We, we, we get our wattage, let's say it like that. So that when we leave the embassy, we walk out as an ambassador. We are not sent to be of this world. We just have to be in it for a season. So I'm going to come on Wednesday night and gather as the embassy of light. The embassy of Christ. And the shepherd is going to preach the word. And the preacher is going to preach the word. And I'm going to get my recharging. But when I leave here. I'm leaving here now to be an ambassador of light. And just as everywhere that Joshua went and Moses went and they took dominion over wherever they stepped, every time you take a step into this world, remember, I'm shedding the light of Calvary. I'm being the light of Calvary. I'm going forth as the light of Calvary. You know, I read something in and I love this verse. It says, forsake not the assembly, you know. And I read the last bit of that. It said, even much more as the day cometh. Talking about as the coming of the Lord gets closer, we have to appreciate the time we get together even more. Because the time that we get together is the time that we become the unity of the body. And when the body comes together, we become many members, but one body. And if one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand to flight, I wonder what would happen if an army would rise up in this house as ambassadors of light. And everywhere that we went, we would just start speaking. I speak the light of Calvary into this city. I speak the light of Calvary into this county. I speak the light of Calvary down my neighborhood street. I I speak the light of Calvary into my kids' school. I speak the light of Calvary. Ever lost soul of this city, I speak the light of Calvary. I pray that this place would start spinning as a lighthouse to this city. I pray that every time we step out of the four walls of the building, that we would go forth as a light into a dark world, that we would be ambassadors of light the face of rulers of darkness. Luke 1 79 to give light to them 
that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Think about those words and let them weigh on your heart. The shadow of death. Those are heavy words to think about when you're thinking about the people we pass every day of our lives. I've made it a point. Every time I get into an Uber now, I've been riding in them a lot. I'm going to minister to my Uber driver. Hey, I don't like talking to people on airplanes more than anybody. You just got to understand. I got an awesome pair of noise-canceling headphones, and when I press that little button, and it says noise cancellation on 10. I don't hear anything. Oh, I turn into a little recluse on an airplane. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know why, where you're going, where you're going. But lately, the Lord's been convicting me. What if this is your opportunity? to be the light in that darkness that that person is covered in. Now, when I'm walking through airports, I don't even know when a pastor, or what pastor pastors wear, but when I'm walking through airports and I'm on these little conveyor belts that they make me walk on, I'm praying, Lord, let the light of Calvary shine into this city. I pray that wherever there is an apostolic church, that the light of Calvary would rise up as a beacon of hope like never before, that every ruler of darkness would crumble at the feet of the light of Jesus Christ. I was sharing this with Brother Myers. I've, I've never felt to do this before, but I felt to go down to the downtown of Nashville. I grabbed a hold of my Bible and I started marching around the downtown of that city. I marched around where that bomb went off. I marched around around homeless people. I marched around bars and honky tonks and all everything. They were drunk and I had my Bible and I was just praying, let the light of Calvary shine in this city. Lord, I don't know what you've got planned for revival here, but let the light shine. Lord, I don't know what you're going to do in this city, but God, let me be an ambassador of light to, to every dark corner of this area. Let the light go down commerce, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth street. Let the light shine, God. Let the light shine, God. It is our heavenly duty to be ambassadors of light in the face of rulers of darkness. John 9 and 4. While it is day, we have to do the works of him who sent me. The night comes when no work may be done. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as as we keep the name of Jesus preached. As long as we keep the name of Jesus prayed. As long as we pray the name of Jesus down our neighborhood, down our city, over our schools, over our families, over our homes, over every over every part of this place, as long as we plead the name of Jesus. He says, wherever I am, there my light will be also. Every day that you wake up, and you start praying your morning new devotional prayer. Whenever you do it, maybe you do it at night, maybe you do it during the day. I have to do it during the day because if I don't, you don't want to be around me for the rest of the day if I don't do it first thing in the morning. But when I wake up in the morning, I start rocking now. Lord, have your will in my life today. And I think I'm just praying a little prayer. But the Lord showed me something that morning when he gave me this message. He said, every time you pray your devotional prayer, you're shooting light into the darkness that is all around your home and all around your city and all around your family and all, everywhere the darkness is trying to go. As long as you're just praying, you're doing more than you think you're doing when you begin to call upon the name of the Lord when you wake up in the morning. You're doing more than you think you're doing when you speak the name of Jesus over your kids and you send them off to school. You're doing more. You're covering them in the armor of light as they go into a world of darkness. 
believe that's why I said, let us not be conformed to this world. Because the confirmation or, or the, the conforming to the world is to be conformed in darkness. And the moment you give yourself to darkness, the light of Jesus is no longer there. Watch as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. So I'm going to keep preaching Jesus, Brother Myers. Because every time I speak Jesus, light just begins to radiate. Every time you wake up in the morning and you plead the blood of Calvary and you, you speak the most powerful name, the name and of which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, you just begin to say, Jesus, you reinstitute him into a world that is being covered in darkness. And as long as he is in the world, he can be the light of the world. Would you stand with me? You know, I've been a little bit more low-key for me. I like to get red in the face, <laughs> scream my head off. But even the, the first time the Lord asked me to preach this in Nashville, I couldn't because I had to convey a burden. Something so important about the time that we're living in. We're facing rulers of darkness. Rulers of darkness in high places. Rulers of darkness that are trying to cast it all across the world. My dad told me today about a bill that's trying to be passed where they're gonna release an algorithm that's going to go on Facebook and every mainstream media platform to where they're going to be listening for anything that is controversial against what is known and accepted to the world. And they're going to remove it. They're doing everything they can do right now to cope this world in darkness and stop the light being shined. But as long as as east wind has some ambassadors of light. Palm Bay has a chance. Melbourne has a chance. Florida has a chance. The United States has a chance. This world has a chance. As long as there's somebody pushing back against the darkness. As long as there's somebody saying, I'm going to keep Jesus in this world. I'm going to keep preaching Jesus. I'm going to keep praying Jesus. I'm going to keep believing Jesus. Would you lift your hands all across the house and would you just begin to speak Jesus? If you want to come to the altar, the altar is open. We need to pray Jesus all across this world. We need to put on the armor of light here tonight. Every person under the sound of my voice, we got to put the armor of light on and we got to get out into the world and we got to start warring against the rulers of darkness. Darkness, you can't have my city. Darkness, you can't have my family. Darkness, you can't have this revival. Darkness, you can't have it. Darkness of Palm Bay, you will not conquer. Darkness of Melbourne, you will not conquer. Darkness of this world, you shall not conquer. Rulers of darkness in high places. Wickedness in high places. Prince of the air. Prince of Palm Bay. That thing that's trying to bring darkness. I speak to you right now as an ambassador of light. I speak light down every street. I speak light into every home. I speak light into every family. I pray that light would begin to draw people to Calvary. I pray that light would begin to pull people to a place of repentance. Lord, let the light shine into darkness. Let the light shine into sin. Come on, would you pray with a little intensity for just a few moments? Come on, speak light over your family. Speak light over your city. Speak light over your neighborhood. Speak light. 
As ambassadors of like God, let us go forth everywhere that we stand. Let darkness be dispelled. Let people in this world see the light that you have given us, God. Let them come to us and say, what's different about you? I've got the light of Calvary. I've got the light of Calvary. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're here tonight and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all you've got to do right now is lift your hands. Uh, Repent of your sin and begin to worship the Lord and he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. This is the light trying to come live in your life. If you're here tonight and you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, the waters are ready. What doth hinder thee? We got to get you to the light. I know it's Wednesday night, but I feel to do something in the Holy Ghost. I feel to do something in the Holy Ghost right now. Could we... Could we just, if you're in the back, would you turn and face the walls? Would you do that for me? Could we get people with hands pointing north, south, east, and west? Get hands pointing to every direction, north, south, east, and west. And when you lift your hands and extend your hands all over this building, would you be the ambassador of light God has called you to be? And would you speak light into every four corners of this city? Would you dispel darkness? I speak light to the north. I speak light to the south. I speak light to the east. I speak light to the west. I speak light to all four corners of this county that there would be an area-wide revival like we have never felt. I speak the light to begin to dispel darkness from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I speak light to all four corners. Come on, call your street that you live out on right now and say, I speak light over my neighborhood. Uh, come on, uh, call out the name uh, of your kid's school and say, I speak light over my kid's school. Call out the name of whatever you feel right now and speak the light of Calvary. Come on, you are dispatching light all over this city. You are dispatching light. You are an ambassador of light. Send it into this world. <laughs> Let the 
the light of Calvary. Your far spent night, uh, you've had it for too long. Uh, we're speaking the light uh, into this city. <laughs> 